All right, everyone, and uh, welcome. So, you know, if you're watching this, it's Friday, and it's 2 o'clock here on the Eastern Time Zone here in the United States. So welcome to a Hubcast here um, from Cyber Social Hub. And if you've never heard of Cyber Social Hub, um, you should, because if you're a digital investigator checking out anything really from OSINT, cybersecurity, digital forensics, whatever it is that you're uh, investigating technology-wise, uh, it's just a group of nerds hanging out in uh, kind of like a... Facebook, LinkedIn-ish type environment. And uh, we ask a lot of nerdy questions and try to find answers uh, to these things. And we're, we're teaching each other constantly uh, to grow our skills. Uh, and we make all those resources available to you. And the best part is it's absolutely free to you. Uh, yeah, I know, crazy, right? Um, so yeah, oh man, we got some, uh, all kinds of people in there. Hey, how are you? Good to have you back again, thanks. Um, so we got a couple of guests on today. So what we're going to talk about um, is a little bit about uh, consulting in digital forensics. So I'm going to bring on Jeff and Jonathan both. There they all are. Almost caught you, Jonathan, drinking, didn't I? <laughs> it was quick putting that down. <laughs> Sorry about that. I usually try to take a look before I go bring you guys on live. But uh, hey, first of all, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day and, uh, and hanging out on our really terrible talk show here that we that we do i, I really appreciate it man uh how you guys today good everybody's good it's good. friday it's friday great yep. can't complain <laughs> yeah absolutely and that's why we like to do these on on friday because i figure hey you know about two o'clock everybody's uh, lunch is all nice and settled in and it's friday and they're like ah, really don't want to work anymore so we just give them an excuse not to like oh we got to catch that they're going to teach something today so <laughs> they can just uh come in and, and hang out with us for a little while uh, yeah. Very cool. So I, I want to introduce Jonathan and Jeff both, um, and I'll, I'll point and I'll, I'll, I'll do have you guys do your own introductions, um, just so people know who you are. Jeff, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead. Sure. I'm uh, Jeff Keener, uh, Director of Pre-Sales Consulting here at OpenText, uh, with focus on our security solutions, including, as everybody's aware of, the uh, NK solutions. Very cool, Jonathan. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Arias. I manage Pre-Sales Consulting. I work for Jeff, but I uh, deal with the West and Central team, so those are my guys. But yeah, we do, we do, we're end case guys. Very cool. Hey, a, a very little known story that I think Jonathan knows because he was in. We have a, we always have a practice session ahead of time, but I know Jeff, you had some other things happening. Um, but um, uh, end case was the very first tool that we used in my lab way back in uh, two thousand. I think it was 2002. Oh man, was it like version three? <laughs> hey, I don't want to date myself too terribly oh, much. Um, That's so, awesome. but yeah, and the training was fun. We went to the training. I think it was at that time. You guys were in. Uh, oh gosh, where was that? Uh, man, right by that mall. Uh, over in where in California? Uh, where, no, where the, what in, state? On the East Coast in uh, Virginia. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the yeah, old West, office over there, Jeff. Western, yeah, near Dulles right. Airport. That's all. I yeah, 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 near, right near Dulles. Dulles. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm geographically Western, impaired yeah. here, much less yeah. you know when I travel. I'm just like I have <laughs> yeah. no idea. No, not Tyson. I got to go to the office right. once. Yeah, I got to go to the office once. Yeah, it was, was it was cool, Western and I think area, but yeah, I, I think it was yeah because the company I ended up, which I'll name, 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 leave nameless here, it actually ended up buying that from you guys. And you guys then moved across the way, and there was catty corner from one another. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. One of our competitors purchased that space. Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you know, footsteps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, that's who I ended up working for for years after that. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, that's so weird. I went to I went to N case training in this very room oh, right cool. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very cool. So cool. what we want to talk about a little bit today. And, you know, a lot of our uh, viewers and people that pop in are actually active uh, digital investigators. They're um, doing the grind, right? All the stuff that we've all done and uh, take a deep breath here. We don't have to do anymore. At least I don't. <laughs> I'm hoping you guys don't do a whole lot of that <laughs> yeah. either. Um, but um, we still have the knowledge, right? And they may be looking to get into some of the uh, consulting area. Um, you know, and I know that's kind of a, a big, huge area. It could be consulting this, that, uh, one or the other. And I didn't know if one of you guys maybe had some, uh, some tips for them on, on maybe how to make that, that transition. 
I'm going to yeah. call you guys out. I'm going to say right. education because um, yeah. I know back circa 2004 when I got into it, that didn't exist. Um, but now you've got like Blake Champlain. You get all these different right. uh, undergraduate as well as graduate programs that are out there. Um, heck, when I was going through college, I went through uh, SUNY Brockport. The option was, uh, you know, computer science was programming. And I had zero interest in doing that. So I went the uh, business route. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I, Jonathan, you just finished up your master's in cybersecurity. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Something like that never would have even, no one would have even thought of something like that back in uh, 2000, you know, 99, 2000. <laughs> right. It, it, uh, I don't, I don't think it existed, right? Uh, no, no. At, at all. Yeah. It was, day. it was all computer science type stuff or programming mm -hmm. or, yeah. It, that's what I remember when I first started in 98, 97, when I went to college. I did yeah. two years of programming. I'm like, never mind, this sucks. And I went into the army. I was like, okay, I'm going to the army. Yeah, the programming sucks. In hindsight, I'm like, dang, I should have kept up with it. I think I was in I COBOL, Visual Basic, C plus. I'm like, it wasn't the punch the cards, right? Not the old yeah, punch it wasn't, cards. No, not the punch <laughs> cards. It was class in my senior year of high school. And I'm like, all right, you know what? This is not for me. I'm not even going to bother computer science. Yeah. This is my college. But now it it's was, like, uh, you know, it's been online. Uh, you know, brick and mortar traditional schools. There's so much out there. SANS yeah. training certifications. Um, yeah. Like to not get, I mean, there's almost too much information out there and too many offerings versus yeah. what we felt, you know, dealt with back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, it was... I felt like I'm dating <laughs> myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was try I was trying to make fun of uh, Jonathan for the old punch card, but he caught it right oh, away. <laughs> cool. I couldn't believe they were still teaching that in 97, 98. I'm like, why am I in this class? But I just remembered <laughs> it was like a prereq as part of that. And I'm like, this is not in height. Like I said, in hindsight, had I stuck with COBOL, I'd probably be one of like five developers in the world. <laughs> who could, you know, troubleshoot like the New York Stock Exchange or whoever is still using COBOL in the back end, right? Like there's financial institutions that are still using some of that code. Right, so, yeah, I mean. All around Y2K, if you remember everybody. Yeah. That was the, you know, 96, yeah. 97. Yeah, I mean, Alexis is making fun of you guys, so I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's all I'm saying. But it transfers into Python, right? Cobalt Python's the same thing. It's, just, it's not the maybe, same thing. Maybe slightly different. Slight, slightly different. Just a yeah. bit. Mm. I, I mean, from my perspective, um, being uh, you know someone who was – I started in IT, right? Like, I literally was mm -hmm. the backup. So I was – funny. I was, a, I was a construction claims adjuster for travelers really? insurance yes no that's kidding. what i did what that's how i started like doing bit work wow. like it work and some one of my my coworkers was retiring after 33 years and as an adjuster in the major claims unit he says to me jonathan you're young go into computers i'm like you're good at it because i was the guy i was the local guy in san diego when the server was down i'd go in there and help the it guys do their thing right i'm like okay i could do this while i was going to school I'm like all right whatever and uh moved up you know i took that advice called my uncle who was working for nissan motor company at the time mm -hmm. and said hey i want to get into it how do i do it and he goes well i have a i have a opening for a tape backup operator <laughs> i was the tape library like you know kevin you know you have a tape library now it's all automated like there's these arms right and they go do, 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 right no yeah. no no, no. Jonathan was the tape library operator. So here I was <laughs> at Nissan Motor Company. That was funny. <laughs> changing changing yeah, like LTO, DLT3 backup tapes, oh, right? Yeah. On every server, uh, Nissan North America, every single one, right? I was the guy changing the servers, get, get there like 3.30 a.m. And the server guys would realize, wait a second, if you're here, I don't have to come in here if something goes down, right? Whoever's on pager duty. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I know how to do this stuff. And they, they're like, okay, get here's the, here's the key. I will teach you how to fix these servers and play around with these, you know, with these big compact HP, like giant four, four U servers, <laughs> but I don't have to come in. I'll just call you and we'll, we'll fix it together. I'm like, yeah, sure. And so this guy, Bill started teaching me how to do this stuff. And, um, little to you know little known to the rest of the server team that he wasn't coming in he was actually just calling me when a, when he got paged and i would go <laughs> in and fix it but in exchange he would teach me how to do that stuff and so he, he, they they finally six months later they're like 
I, I think he was out and and one of these other gals connie comes in and she goes jonathan i saw uh i got page because um server this 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 was down i'm like oh yeah, yeah i fixed it already and she's all what do you mean you fixed it and i'm like uh oh um wasn't bill on it was i was only supposed to do it when bill was on call well bill was technically on call but i didn't know he was on vacation or he was out or whatever oh no so i fixed it and she goes what do you mean you fixed it i'm like oh yeah yeah. whenever you know bill's on call he has he asked me to to help him out and do this and you know in exchange he would would show me she goes oh did he now (laughs) bill's like the developer that gets paid and outsources everything to china he he, he was basically (laughs) outsourcing his job to me it was outstanding but i learned so much from that guy and uh you know so then you know we started doing that stuff and it was pretty cool that's pretty Um, awesome yeah so i mean the server guys would come in like hey where is this server and i'm like okay third one down you know go to the second stack count three Mm -hmm. right there's the server right because it was i mean there were that's a hundred plus servers in there and i knew where all of them were so whenever something was going down that to do something but yeah i was the manual tape backup operator it was awesome (laughs) that's pretty awesome it looks like uh alexis also took the cobalt class in uh in that same year i think that's there it is i think that's what he was referring to let me slide this over i realize yeah it's the end that was the end i think cobalt towards the end of the career Mm -hmm. like i think it was like dying in like early 2000, right? Or something. Um, so. Yeah, I don't, I, that I couldn't tell you. I, I've Once never even to touched like, it. Jonathan, there was no point. <laughs> I, I, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I started off on the, you guys remember, well, it was, the Commodore 64 was like the mo- the popular yeah. one, right? Yeah. And then um, I had the Atari, I think it was 800 XL or something like that. Windows, oh, okay, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, line yep. line ten, print hello, line twenty, go to ten, and then it just scrolls down. That was that was the the top skill. <laughs> uh, Man, what was the first? My dad was an engineer for for Hughes Aircraft, so he had an IBM XT. That was the ooh. first computer I remember, and I remember him showing me stuff. And I remember typing C format, boom, kill the computer. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was good. But I was like ten years old or something. Yeah, yeah that was probably that. the old eight hundred eighty eight because that's where I got my stuff. Yeah. Was in computers yeah. and my dad worked for a uh pension record keeping company they got eventually got purchased by transamerica and they did all the back-end transactions so it was just a data center mainframes and the old uh real real tapes so i'd go in there on weekends and be mounting tapes and cleaning all the stuff and one of the guys as they were starting to add in some of the uh, pcs and upgrade stuff uh one of the uh, data center or one of the uh it guys is like hey jeff you want to learn how to build a pc and i was you know eight or nine years old. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like tinkering, taking stuff apart, putting things yeah. back together. So I got my start, you know, building an 8088 out of like spare parts and learning, you know, the MF, what is it? MFM hard drives, like these big old clunky drives that had 40 megabytes of storage. <laughs> and, you know, memory was not even close to, a, you know, 640 K and whatnot. K, right. Yeah. There's a K in front of yep. that. <laughs> And then, you know, started, you know, as I grew older, got, you know, 286, 386, started to, my buddies got involved and we were into like Sierra online games. So we're now like, oh. we're trying to extract as much power out of these boxes that we had built out of spare parts and, you know, like messing around with auto, what is that? Auto exec and config sys files and oh, yeah. dealing with drivers and interrupts and yeah. modems configurations. And it was like, the, half the fun was building this stuff and like breaking it and trying to figure out how to make it work. Once it worked, we're like, all right, I'm bored. Let's start over and try something <laughs> different. And so that kind of took me all the way up through college when I was like doing a finance major. And for a part-time job, they were offering uh, to do IT on campus where you could go around to different dorms and connect students' machines up to the internet. And the good old uh, SUNY uh, uh, New York system was giving everybody out like a class, what was it, class B or class C IPs. So you had a direct IP address from your dorm room to the internet. So I didn't realize that at first, but I went on to yeah, I went on to Microsoft and I signed up for their MSDN, like their early um early on their MSDN. So they actually sent me a trial edition of uh, Windows and Workstation uh, NT4. So I installed NT4 server, started playing around with Double IS, and I called my dad and he was at work and I'm like, Dad, can you open up a browser? And type in this, and I gave him this numeric digit, and he's like, what's this? And I'm like, well, just punch it in, see what happens. And he goes, oh, hey, look, you put something up on the internet. And I was just, like, shocked. I was like, oh, my God, I can now do FTP off my box in the room. And, yes. 
And I think by the time I graduated, like all of a sudden things were starting to explode. I graduated in 99 and my sister started at Penn State in 99. Uh -huh. And that's when Napster took over. Like, so like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. three months into her career, um, her uh, freshman year, I went to visit because I was probably going to go see a football game or something. And all the kids had all these things going on their screens with all these music songs. And I'm like, what is this? And some kid goes, dude, this is Napster. It's great. You can get whatever song you want. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, man, this must be costing the college a fortune. Like their, their T1s must be just swamped. <laughs> and they were all on flex. Um, they were just like, they didn't have a set. They were just playing, uh, paying on a flex rate for mm -hmm. their bandwidth. And oh, it was man. just going berserk. So the campuses were freaking out because they were getting these massive monthly bills. <laughs> <laughs> But that's now, how I kind of got in. That's how I got into the whole IT to start off was uh, just out of pure interest as a kid growing up. And then just, you know, pick, you know, finding that, uh, you know, getting my foot in the door. And that just started as doing that on campus, you know, IT delivery. Which, yeah. And I, I find that uh, pretty common among what we I, I call the, the people who speak geek and ease, right? The language of yeah. geeks yeah. Um, is that it's it's early on everyone has kind of this natural curiosity with technology and what can I do with this? Oh, wait, I broke this, but can I break this? Or, you know, going and, and trying to find right. that. And it's, it's pretty awesome to hear that you guys have very, very similar stories um, as well. I, 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 I don't want to. Be fun. He wants to get into gaming and stuff. So yeah. I bought him a gaming PC and I figured yeah. I bought him one that we can upgrade over time. Cause I know video cards and Jonathan had to give me a refresher on gaming because he's a streamer. Yeah. And for me, it's like I'm like 15 years removed from gaming, so I had no idea how to enter into this hole. <laughs> right, yes, but, right. Yep. So, so my so, son's off <laughs> on his way to whatever future in IT, I guess. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to try to make this fit on the screen here. Uh, hey, I did it. Look at that. First shot. <clears throat> That's not bad. Um so I, I guess we've kind of leading up to this too. So these, yeah. these are questions you guys are seeing on the screen straight yeah. from, uh, from YouTube. Yep. You probably saw him scrolling through down there. Um, and, uh, you know, how, how do you guide someone who's, uh, I think, uh, is actually an international student right now. Yeah. I'm looking back mm -hmm. over in the chat. Um, how do how do they get towards that goal? Obviously, you know, some practical experiences obviously needed before you can, uh, yeah. consult unless you watch youtube then you have to have no experience whatsoever and <laughs> no i mean they teach you everything. give your opinion about it you they want. teach everything on youtube right? right so hey wait we're on youtube wait a minute yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> but I, uh, I mean yeah in, in, ter in terms of practicality like you know, having an it background was nice right so i understood mm -hmm. computers i understood operating systems i understood the network mm -hmm. and so getting into um, the digital forensic side of it, which is, okay, now you understand computers, but do you understand how to investigate a computer? Now that's where the mindset, you have to have mm -hmm. that, the curiosity of like, yeah, I want to, you know, to you, that, that tinkering mindset now goes into tinkering of the actual, you know, bits and bytes on that drive. Right. Um, so from a digital forensics perspective, I think, uh, I mean, I didn't really start my journey in that until probably late. 2010, 2011. So my wife worked for Guidance, which was the, the company that was purchased by OpenText that, sure. that made Encase. Yep. And she would bring back, like she had a machine at the apart at our apartment that had Encase like version five, version six on it. And I would go over there and mess around with it. And I knew all of their peeps and Jeff and Jeff was <laughs> working for them at the time. So yeah. I was like this, I was I like, a, a where to fly, where to travel. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Becca was in PS and telling these people where to find she would, she would always say, man, this is like, I would never want you to have this implementer, like professional services job. Fast forward to 2014. I became an end case implementer. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I was like right. on every week I was traveling, implementing end case. So what that required um, was the, the knowledge of Microsoft because we are installed on Microsoft mm -hmm. OS, knowledge of, you know, SQL, knowledge of Microsoft Exchange because we connect to Exchange, IIS, like all of the Microsoft stuff. You have to know that to be able to then understand the rest of it. So I think that's where you have to have a foundation in computers mm -hmm. but that's not everybody's story there we have we have uh um, some of our colleagues who are law enforcement guys they were they were cops and they said hey someone has to do that investigation we don't have anybody who knows how to do it and they went and picked up you know picked up the manual 
took a training class in Pasadena or in uh, Dulles and learned how to use, you know, from a forensics perspective, use their investigative background as a law enforcement officer to actually, um, you know, do digital forensics. And so th those, are, I think those are the two paths. So it's pretty common. You'll see, yep. hey, you're an IT guy and that's how you came up or, or you're a, a, a law enforcement guy and that's how you came up. Um, but it all ends in the same place, right? Um, from a digital forensics perspective. And then of course, digital forensics, you know, are you doing a people investigate what Jeff and I like and have coined people investigation, machine investigation, people. Okay. That's more criminal activity, internal investigation in the corporate world, machine investigation. That's your incident responders, right? Hey, I need to go down. It's the same. It's the same thing. You're using the mm. same tool, but you're using it for two different purposes, right? right? So one is, Hey, that guy's surfing the internet and doing bad stuff while at work. You know, we need to pull that down and prove to HR that, yep, they're doing that you know, surreptitiously, right? As opposed to, hey, that uh, there's malware running over there. We need to prove that that, you know, whatever that malware is and see when it came in and do a timeline analysis of, you know, the activities that happen. So those are the types of, that's where the digital forensic consent response come from, right? So there's always those two. Um, but in terms of like how you get there, those, I think there's I, a, third those route. There's a third route now, like I was alluding to with the education oh, yeah, route. Yeah. That did yeah, not school. exist. I mean, right, to right. go to graduate classes that and programs that focus mm -hmm. around forensics or incident, okay. you know, DFIR and cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. That, I mean, because not to say that I feel like I wasted four years in college doing my business degree because that served me extremely well. <laughs> but to imagine if I could have jump started my career and had those four years of having that, um, that's that's amazing. That's awesome. And um, I'm constantly on LinkedIn and I'm seeing longtime colleagues, uh, for, you know, former colleagues, friends mm -hmm. that work at, you know, all the big pharmaceuticals, Fortune, you know, within the Fortune 100, 500, and they're constantly hiring. They're trying to find someone to fill those spaces, whether it's cybersecurity, incident response, uh, forensics. And the biggest, the best way, unless you're already in that space, it's the education route, and that'll get your foot in that door. The um, and these larger organizations realize the need for that, so those internships are available, and um, you know, and that's one of those things where I definitely say, you know, reach out, you know, whether it's Jonathan or myself or other people within the industry, we would love to help connect the dots and get you to people uh, that are hiring and looking for, uh, you know, people to start their careers in that path. Yeah, yeah, I mean. I, I took some some time as a you know and did my own consulting gig um, as a professional services consultant, right? So for two years, I did mm -hmm. red teaming, I did oh, nice. DFIR, I did all kinds of stuff. And interestingly enough, some of the college kids in the, from the local university here they needed a internship, and they're like, "Oh yeah, hey, I know this guy. He he does, he has his own his own shop." Um, they're criminal justice majors, but they needed mm -hmm. you know, X number of hours. Let's go learn digital forensics. I'm like. Sure, I'll take free labor. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> so they, they came in, and I, I would have like hard drives for them, and I would have Tableau, uh, you know, duplicators. I'm like, look, I need to duplicate those before I can do work on them. Here's how you do it, and I would show them how to do it. And for hours and hours and hours, they would sit there while they studied and did duplication work for me, like hundreds of drives. It was it was awesome, right, for them to to be able to do that. But so they learned something. Um, that's the other way is you don't necessarily need to be, I mean, Jeff said, obviously college and school and education, that's a, that's a great way to do that now with that mm -hmm. wasn't right. necessarily available to us, you know, 20 years ago, but there's a lot of programs now. SANS has great training. I mean, um, yeah. we've got, you know, open text has training in NK specifically. Um, but yeah, there's some stuff there where we just didn't have those resources in the past. So and if you're a tinkerer, if you're if you're someone who's a technology person, this is one of those things where it's like, oh, I see you start getting into it, and then you start getting it, you dive down the rabbit hole, right? So, oh yeah, hang yeah, on for that yeah. ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's that investigative mindset where you know, and again, you can be great at technology and troubleshooting, but it's also that investigative mindset, and that's you know mm -hmm. the, the ability to start to like see the forest through the trees and you know follow that trail of breadcrumbs, and that's you know, and again, it's not for everybody. But it's, you know, there's enough out there for you to, you know, get a taste of and determine, is that something that you want to do? Right. Uh, and so I say, like, try it, you know, worst case, you say, hey, I understand this concept and how to leverage these forensic tools and the value sure. they bring. But it might not be something that you want to do on a day to day basis as, you know, a forensic practitioner or services related. So. 
And in that case, if you once you have the knowledge, you can then become a sales engineer <laughs> and sell the, the, the solution <laughs> to customers and give them the value proposition. So that's kind of where it led me to after being a practitioner and going, man, now what? And, uh, you know, the sales guy's like, hey, I, I think it ended up being somebody was out and the sales guy, the, the um, customer had a question and they're like, wait, 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 Jonathan's down there. He's implementing it. Let me let me just get him on the phone. So they got me on the phone. I'm talking to the customer. I'm like, yeah, here, here's how you would do it. You know, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, after the, the call, the sales guy calls me and says, hey, man, we're looking for a, a sales engineer. Would you be interested? I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, well, instead of doing what you're doing, you would help me sell the software by doing demonstrations, answering technical questions, doing like proof of concept, stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, nah, I don't, I'm not really that interested. And then he goes, you'd be great at it. And he's all, and you make commission. You make a lot of money doing, you know, this stuff that you love to do, but you don't have to actually like be in the weeds. And I'm like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, you mean I don't have to be hours and hours doing examinations at home? Like, you know, in my dark lab, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Okay, let me try this out. So that's, you know, and, and Jeff was at the time um, leading the, the, the sales engineering team already. And so I came over, it was inside sales. And it was like, those yeah. guys were like a meat mm -hmm. grinder. Well, you were in the do, bullpen out there in Pasadena. Oh, I was in the bullpen. I was doing <laughs> eight demos a day. Now there's only eight hours in a day, right? Technically in a work day, but there's... <laughs> Is there? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so you do an hour demo. I'm like, so when did you get up to go to the bathroom? I'm like, I didn't. I just <laughs> sat there and was like, these guys would just churn and burn, right? Like, but not take their hands to the phone. He'd have to unplug. Yeah, it yeah, the exactly. I'm like, hey, so I, I to the point where I had one guy, one sales guy. I knew his spiel. Actually, there were a few of them. Twenty two oh, yeah. minutes in was when I needed to jump on and do the demo. So I knew from the point that I got introduced. <laughs> To, the, to his spiel, I could run to the bathroom, do what I got to do. I would time it and I would sit back down and then, you know, and you didn't have to be on video, right? It was all right. audio. Right. Oh, yeah. Those times. Yeah. Like now it's Teams and Zoom. This is a new thing. Like back in right. you know, five years we had, ago. We had WebEx and we had a phone. Yeah, we had WebEx and we had a phone. There was no video, but you know, you could yep. demonstrate, right? So, yep. but yeah, I had it to the point where I could, yep, this is case. I would turn it up. I'd show them how to do that. They're like, wow, you know, wow, amazing. <laughs> You know, and then uh, that's it. And then they would buy the software. And then at that point, I do this, right? Because I'm a implementer guy. So my old colleagues, I'm like, I would check it to them and go, hey, hey, you got to go install that. I just, I just sold that software. So go, uh, go install it. So it was fun. It's, it's a, sales engineering is definitely, um, at least for me, it's been the most, uh, it's been the most fun because I still get to talk with customers. I still mm -hmm. get to you know, be an advocate. I still get to, um, you know, do all the digital forensic stuff. Um, I try to stay in it. I I'll do stuff with, with, um, open source tools, with our tool, with, you know, with other tools, um, just to stay up on, you know, what's out there and right. kind of understand right. what's in the, what's in the market. Uh, but also the other side of that is the work-life balance is a lot better, at least here for where we're at. Jeff does a great job of just, Hey, when it's time to go, it's time to go. Right. So, here's what it is but you know we're, we're all pretty available the team's pretty pretty uh close-knit our team is mm -hmm. um we've been around like we've all known each other for what jeff 10 15 years yeah, on I mean, average i'm yeah. on 18 plus years now with guidance software yeah. open text and so like i've seen not only my colleagues careers like jonathan's so, like seeing the evolution of his career like coming into the org as an implementer which actually i started in but um i guess what's more um what's been really awesome is watching customers people that I interacted with back in 2005, 2006 mm -hmm. is they were starting their careers straight out of college and watching their evolution is, you know, they were leveraging these tools to not only do their jobs, but expand their careers and expand their footprint within their organizations. And, you know, we're talking very large, you know, financials and insurance companies where they've now risen to the top. And so it's been really amazing to uh, watch them, support them and watch them grow and to, you know, in many cases, be friends with them. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking of getting started, you have a great story, which, yeah, I'm not going to let you slide <laughs> yeah. past it because you made the mistake in, in the pre-show of letting it slip of how you got yeah. started. So now I want you to tell it. <laughs> All right. So. For many years within guidance software, um, it was coined that I was hired at a funeral. And so there's been a lot, <laughs> I'll dispel all what happened. So, um, early, early on when I was out of college, 
circa 99, 2000, 2001, um, my mom's best friend, uh, Lori, she traded, she goes, oh, my son's into IT and whatnot, and, but he works for the U.S. Customs. So I don't know. She gave me his information. Mm -hmm. And so we started trading um, AOL instant messages. And <laughs> this is how, you know, going way back. So we're trading oh, yeah. some messages and just talking about technology and what's going on. And he was talking about how he was getting ready to retire from the customs and go on. And he was a part-time trainer at guidance software and forensics, which it didn't resonate with me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just cutting my teeth on it and doing, you know, ghosting of images and just, you know, back in windows 95 days. So the whole forensics thing just didn't resonate with me at the time. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a few years, um, unfortunately, his mother uh, suddenly passed away. Oh. So there we are, with my, myself, my family, we're at um, my, fr um, my friend's uh, mother's wake. And along comes Bill Siebert, who's this, if anybody's ever met him, oh, yeah. he's a larger than life personality, <laughs> you know, all six foot five, you know, 250. And he commands the room. And this started, you know, from the service when he's getting up there talking about, how his mother would chase him out of the house, you know, and take his, you know, like, if you're going to, if you're going to uh, hitchhike and, you know, walk out of here, you're going out the way I brought you into the world, butt naked, and she'd kick him out and the neighbors would be laughing. So this is my first time actually physically meeting this guy. <laughs> and next thing we're at the Irish wake. And so I don't know how many drinks later we're sitting there. He's telling stories and whatnot of, you know, some of the cases he uh, worked like the Columbine case and, mm. And all of a sudden he goes, you're hired. And I'm like, I must be like, what did I drink? Like, how did that jump to <laughs> this? So funny, like fast forward a month or so, I get a call from some, uh, from Sandy from uh, HR guidance. And she's just asking me to validate a bunch of information. She goes, all right, that's great. We're on uh, next step. We're going to fly you down to Virginia. And I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, we're for an interview. So. Boom. Next thing I'm on a flight heading down to Virginia on a Friday morning. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Um, I'm sitting down with the hiring manager and he's like asking me about my traits. And I just start spilling off like some Boy Scout, like trustworthy look. Like I haven't, I haven't done a real interview before I my save life. the world. Yep. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm getting into. I think it went well. It was a whirlwind tour. I head back to Dulles or Reagan, take my flight back to uh JFK. By the time I landed, I already had an email that had an offer in it. And I'm like, my parents were happy. I'm moving out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back the and I'm moving reason. out of the house. <laughs> and, and I gained a new, you know, a lifelong friend and a mentor um, out of Bill. He was amazing. And it, I mean, I'm, you know, God, uh, he passed away in 2008. So I, I only got to work with him for four years. But mm. in those four years, it felt like I had known him for, you know, worked with him for 20 years. And so he was really amazing. And not only myself, but many of my peers within the organization, he would, you know, take into his wings and, uh, you know, just kind of help mentor them, show them that career path. And he knew it was something new because he was, you know, just kind of getting into it himself. Just he was a few years ahead of us. Yeah. But um, he was trying, you know, he's he saw that there was a, a future here. And so he was definitely willing to help everybody out that wanted to, uh, you know, seek guidance from him. So, yeah. So that was kind of how I got into the whole, into the forensics. So I don't, I, I can't recommend that to anybody else or as far as you know, <laughs> kind of re, the whole no. repeatability of that. When we're talking forensics, it's uh, non-existent yeah. with that <laughs> start, but it's an amazing start that I would never, uh, you know, I would never want to, you know, do a different way again. So, right. But so you're totally saying <laughs> don't go around and start crashing funerals and, you know, you know, <laughs> right. yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I got a film that's not going to work out too well, but okay, yeah, it's fun. Like starting that I was in services doing implementations. I think my second week on the job, I was already in the UK because they had such a backlog of, uh, installs. And these were early on, these were two day installs. So it'd be, you know, fly out on a Sunday, you're installing, you know, Monday and Tuesday at one site. And that would be installing the software and doing like a day and a half of knowledge transfer mm -hmm. all slammed in there. Wednesday would be another travel day to the next city, you know, Thursday, Friday, another install knowledge transfer, and then hopefully back home by late Friday night and then just rinse and repeat. Wow. So I did, I did that for a year and a half and down out of our Virginia space. And I uh, made my way back to the New York office cause they had just opened that. And that was led by uh, Jimmy Doyle. 
who uh, him and his crew, they uh, they founded the computer crimes unit in for the NYPD. Mm -hmm. And so they were hitting their 20 and they were retiring. And so it was the perfect evolution, obviously, for them to go into the private sector. They had the knowledge of using these end case tools and it was kind of still a new thing. So Mm -hmm. who better than these, you know, detectives that had been using these tools day in and day out. And so they uh, started up our uh, services practice out of the New York location. So I had the pleasure of working with uh, Jimmy and the team. And, you know, I was that little, you know, fresh out of school greenhorn with all these, you know, 20 year, you know, veteran detectives that had, you know, lived through everything, including 9-11 and what that entailed. So, but I learned, I learned a lot and we laughed a lot. So that's, <laughs> and, and now and, you're um, the old, you're the old guy, right? That's, yeah. 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 Works yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, <laughs> yeah. Jeff's the veteran yeah. now. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. Years. And yeah, so I did that. And then, um, someone tapped me at my, uh, my next mentor, Joe Pizzo, who is on the pre-sales side. He was a former, you know, RSA engineer. And he's like, dude, you're doing an awesome job with these installs. Why don't you come over to the sales and pre-sales side? You'll make a lot more money and it's a much better job, you know, work-life balance. I was sold. (laughs) And so I jumped over and did that and just evolved all the way up through the ranks to principal and then manager and now uh, global director. So it's, it's been an, it's been awesome. It's been, it's, it's been an awesome uh, ride. Man, that's, that's phenomenal. You guys got some unique stories, uh, but both of you, just for the record, have very similar hanging tape. Uh, stories that uh, you guys have, which I've never done that. The most I've done was, you know, the little uh, cassettes for the personal computers hit like, record on, <laughs> on those things yeah. when they were out for uh, the, the long, uh, the old computers. What was that? The, the Atari again. Uh, what I yep. learned to, to, to code on was, was that thing. That's yeah. pretty I awesome. I still have my 800XL over here. That and my PC Junior. Really? I so, got mine in the next yeah. room. I, I, I yep. keep it back there because uh, I had to find, I, I didn't have the converter box, you know, oh, to, to yeah. hook the thing to a TV. And then I'm like, well, holy hell, what TV has the two little screws uh, yeah, in the yeah, back yeah. anymore, yeah. right? I'm yeah. like, you have if to I have got one, converter. who cares? At right? least the RCA, right? From that to RCA or <laughs> that to coax. Right, yeah. but they still sell those types of adapters. Yeah. You can look and, and find Well, my them. old high school job was at Radio Shack or college in the summers. Jonathan I worked at Radio Shack. About that. Yeah. Just, Jonathan and I were just talking about that the other day. And like, if you needed something like that, you would just right. go to Radio Shack. Yep. Which, unfortunately, you know, they're not there anymore. Yeah, but, no. Um, those little things, man, I just, I hated doing inventory once a quarter. That's all I remember about Radio Shack. <laughs> the resistors and the batteries. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was my favorite store to go in because it was, oh, in, man. It was in our it. mall. We had it in a, actually yep. in a mall. And I'd just go through and look at everything going, oh, wow, what, what do you suppose I can do with that thing? It's like, I could afford that at however old I was. You know, it was like a yeah. $2, like probably less than $2 resistor. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't afford I used to, because I went to school by Rochester at SUNY Brockport, um, and I worked in, what was it, Chai Lai at the Radio Shack there. And we'd have guys that would come in, because I would do evenings and close at the store. Mm-hmm. And the manager trusted me of the money in closing the store because I was going to college. So that was my gig. I'd go in there and spend two hours every night closing the store out. And I would always get these engineers from Kodak. And this is as they were get, evolving and getting into digital uh, cameras. Mm-hmm. They were like, you know, they, were, they would come down to the store and they'd be buying up, like, they'd go to the parts section for two hours. They'd spend the whole night there picking out stuff. And I'd be like, like a whole bag full of stuff. I have no idea what they were doing with it, but it was the Kodak corporate credit card and they were figuring something out. Back there. <laughs> <laughs> Ron uh, mentions the old uh, Tandy 1000 SX. Oh man. Uh, oh, man. Holy cow. I don't even know if I could. The amount it. of stuff I sure. threw out. Cause like we would do clean outs. Like, you know, once it gets to the point where we're like, all right, there'd be this whole section in the back storage and just be all this Tandy stuff. I can't imagine how much of that stuff we ended up throwing out, which probably today from a collector standpoint or people that want to get into that retro uh, PC yeah, stuff. Would love to have. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, what was the thing? It was similar to something Radio Shack had out. It may have been the the one of the Tandy versions of, but it was the Texas Instrument had this crazy. Yeah, TI thing had out. something. It was it a TI ninety nine or was that the? That's the calculators. That's the, the is that the calculator? Yeah. See now yeah, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to go Google and 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 see what it was, but it, it was something very similar to that. Um, what it was here? Sorry, I see. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, there hey, you go. I guess there's one or two left. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's still around. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, man, there's just a, a ton of stuff there. I remember seeing how how cool all that stuff was. It was, it was always great. Oh, Ron gets the, uh, uh, the the A plus plus for the Star Wars reference. If you guys didn't see that, that was popped up there. Megan says, "Yep, yep." <laughs> so yeah. All right. Hey, also, I forgot to tell you guys, uh, and I apologize the audience in advance. If you have a question, I'm I'm watching chat pretty close. Um, but if you have a question uh, for either of these guys, just pop it into chat. And if you can remember to put a Q and a colon in front of it, that way I can go through and I can search and, and find it really quickly because uh, I know this uh, chat's kind of going by a little a little quicker than it does normally. So, um, yeah, if you guys got a question like, uh, you know, I think we've covered a lot of how the, the best practice is on how to how to get in there. Uh, you give, you guys have given a couple examples, but say someone's um, – like fresh out of school, right? I know there's a couple students that, that pop in here every now and then. And once you have that coveted degree, right? And what I've realized about the coveted degree when you're fresh out of college is you really know nothing, but you have that degree, <laughs> right? Because um, yeah. you don't, I mean, they could throw you into a scenario and you've been in school for however many years, you know, and yeah. Uh, so w what would what would you guys recommend to, to someone at that stage? Um, yeah. in, their, in their careers. It, you know, it's funny going back for my master's, I met a lot of um, students who are going, who are not in the, the cybersecurity space or the, you know, digital forensics space yet. And talking with them, mm -hmm. um, they're trying to figure out, oh, how do I get into that now that I have this degree? I'm like, the one of the best ways to do is to join something like this, like the cyber social hub and mm -hmm. start to get to know people, right? Network. It really is all about networking. Um, the other way is uh, join your local, um, you know, ISSALA or HTCIA, any of those organizations that have, go to those meetings, start to get you know, get to know people there. Um, really, that's that's what it comes down to. And, and do your own, you know, even if you're um, uh, just, just starting out, start to do that work and mm -hmm. volunteer. Uh, I know the LA County Sheriff um, has... Uh, a digital task force that you could yeah the regional task your, force yeah as long as you're nk certified or or sans certified in in digital forensics they would love your help so do that kind of stuff you'd be surprised mm -hmm. how much work is out there so find your local your local pd right and say hey i'm a i'm a certified digital forensics investigator i'd love to donate some of my time just to do that um you know find a local con a consulting firm that is looking for, you know, someone to get in and, and really do the work. Right. So just keep in mind, if you're going to be a professional services consultant, there's a lot of travel sometimes. So yeah. oh, that boy. is like 80% travel. You're all over the place, like in international too, because you'd be surprised like the, the, the amount of work that is out there for um, not only digital forensics, but you know, you get into e-discovery, right? So you get into um, incident response. Um, so all of the things that come around, um, you know, that, that DFIR uh, moniker where you're like, oh, I just need you to go and collect a hundred hard drive images. Great. Yep. How long is that going to take? Yeah. <laughs> mobile, yeah. like mobile forensics, that's going to be big, right? Oh, like boy. That's, it already is. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, anything to get your foot in the door, like Jonathan, like yeah. even like you were in a complete different role within what was the Travelers Insurance you were saying. No, oh, yeah. Just mm -hmm. You're in your foot's in the door start talking, you know, put up a DFIR poster or something that'll catch people's attention. <laughs> yeah. right, if you're the yeah. guy at the lunchroom that's always talking about cybersecurity and this and that, eventually, you know, maybe the right person will come along. And that's one of those things where just internal networking within the organization, yeah. um, just make yourself present, make yourself known and just try to get out there, you know, and that's just, it, you know, it's making your own opportunities is what I think. Like nothing's going to come and just be handed to, you got to grasp on that. You got to jump on that, try to make your own opportunities. Um, yeah. That's, the best advice I can give for anybody. And it goes back to that curiosity. It's just mm -hmm. always learning and always trying, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and like you were saying, Jeff, it, it, you know, make sure you're active, right? Because most, most of us that's been in the industry for a long time. We love to talk about the industry, right? Cause we, we yeah, love yeah. the industry. Otherwise we still wouldn't be in it. Right. Yeah. So don't be right. afraid to ask questions. You know, we'll talk to you all day long and give you the best advice that we can and if we know somebody and you're a fit for that heck we'll do an introduction that's uh yeah. you know i mean it, it's it's probably one of the friendliest industries that uh that gosh i can recall you know 
Oh yeah, um, for sure. Well, and the supply and demand. I mean, yeah. frankly, there's just a there's a supply issue, and there's mm. no, the demand is just ever increasing, especially when you go down that cyber route, which builds upon DFIR, which builds upon forensics. Mm. So it's just those found getting those basic foundation components like forensics and building off that is going to position you in an awesome, you know, just it's going to position you perfectly for getting into this industry. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. Don't be, afraid, don't be afraid to, you know, I mean, again, you're not, you know, you might not be sinking, you might not be swimming, but you're paddling like crazy under the, you know, just, you know, Google's your friend, YouTube, there's so many resources out there to keep you mm-hmm. going. Uh, you know, my early career in IT, it was definitely based upon a lot of, you know, early on Google. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you know, you know yeah. doing active directory configurations and all that stuff. We didn't have the resources like they have now. Based by heck, you know, we were Googling and doing everything we could to network with people that did know. And so I get, you know, the resources yeah, are out. The resources right that are available are unbelievable. I mean, it's, you can get free training on YouTube all day. Like yep. you could spend hours on YouTube and at the end of it, hey, look at this. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. for forty dollars, you can go and find um I, I love Humble Bundle. There's a humblebundle.com. They have a what they, is that? they have the ebooks. They have oh, okay. ebooks that you can donate. Oh, so you donate like twenty five dollars, and you get all of these ebooks. I have a giant collection of no that kidding. stuff. Hang on, all, I gotta write this down. Oh, yeah. it's called, Check what, out humblebundle.com. <laughs> Humble bundle. Humble bundle. Here, like I'll type it bundle. in. Chat. Humble. All right. And bundle. And I will. Uh, I will repost it's it out great. in chat here because I don't know which, yeah, which chat can just... you put in. Uh, well, I'm streaming over here, so I can. Oh, I can type gotcha. It. <laughs> ah, right, so, yeah. uh, look at you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't yeah, see it come through yet, so it must be our future. Mode yeah, yeah. Humble Bundle in. is great. So if oh, you, um, yeah, okay. they have like all kinds of software. They, they, the, the stuff that you get on there for 25 bucks is stupid. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> no right? it's just like, holy smoke. What, let's see, what's the current bundle on books, right? So the current bundle on books right now is uh, you can do RPG gaming. Sometimes there's good ones. Where is it at? Uh, oh, here you go. Program popular. Pay what you want. Programming languages. I mean, ebooks, right? Like the, I, I have, I have all of these actually, right? Hot, robust Python, Learning Perl. Like this is the kind of stuff where, for twenty five dollars, you you've gotten every book from O'Reilly on on these on these subjects and just rock through them. I'm I'm definitely checking that out. Um, yeah. So as long as it's not like the Napster of ebooks, I'm I'm on there. Man. No, no, <laughs> they, so it's cool because like you know, they, it's that whole. They'll, uh, you know, for $25 or whatever it is to get the whole thing, they'll, you can choose how much of it to donate to whatever charity they're supporting at the time. So these, it's, it's, it's that. So that's a cool way to do that. But we're Windows Essentials, pay what you want. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. That's um, awesome. But around uh, some of the questions that I saw. Yeah, I'll, the, I'll uh, post some of those up here. I, yeah. I'm going to throw them in mm-hmm. order here because I'm trying to keep track of them all. And all of a sudden, like six of them came in like, bam, 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 bam. And I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> hold on. I'm old. I almost had to right. grab my uh, my readers I got sitting here next to me. <laughs> like, yeah, I saw the social media one. That's by. an interesting one for digital yeah, let me, forensics. Uh, let me throw that one up here, and uh, that way we can see it. Uh, oh, there it is. Let me uh, see. Hopefully we center it up. There we go. It says, uh, how much do you deal with social media evidence um, like uh, in the digital forensic world? I'm guessing that's kind of. uh, It's starting to come around Um, and it really it's wholly dependent on what your what your role is. Are you digital forensics for criminal investigation? Are you, you know, in law enforcement or are you digital forensics in the corporate space? Because there's two separate. Right. We wear two different hats. Right. Mm -hmm. Invest internal investigator, corporate investigator versus criminal investigator Mm -hmm. Um, and criminal investigation. Absolutely. They're using I mean, they got to you know, there's there's tools out there. Um, What is it? Life wrap navigator, like some of these some of these tools that are doing just scraping of of, and pulling down of that stuff. But even uh, even our end case tool has um, uh, connectors into Facebook, Twitter, um, I think Instagram too, but yeah, so Instagram. pulling that stuff down. Yeah. And being able to present that as part of your digital forensic report. Right. Um, yeah. there is a need there it, definitely on the law enforcement side, on the corporate side, it's a little bit different. Um, cause yeah. you do have well, to then, then the privileges or the rights, whereas on the law enforcement side, like Facebook or meta has their own interface for law enforcement to be able right. to log in, to put in their requests with their, right. uh, you know, the ju- you know, what is it? The, uh, not the judge's instructions, the, uh, no, it's a, a subpoena. 
the subpoena that allowed them. Pull, yeah, it's, it's a subpoena. Right yeah. Now. So and it's like we've so seen some are, of the those, and it's not exactly a, a, a great digital dump load of data, but they get their data that they need to go through. Um, whereas we've like our solutions as well as other forensic solutions have built connectors uh, to a lot of those social media sites, including like the Office 365 or O365 stuff. Um, sure. The one issue is you need the credentials you need. Mm -hmm. And so again, that's, you know, if they're using a corporate account to post on social media, great. If they're not, then it becomes an HR type situation where obviously they have to sit down with the employee and, you know, come to yeah. some sort of an agreement to be able to go capture that information. See, I don't know if I could train, I could have ever done the corporate stuff after I did the law enforcement. Cause we could just go, yeah, here's the paper. <laughs> we're going to just, we're going to yeah, go right, look yeah. regardless. I don't care. If you're, you're like, I have to do, do what now? Oh, man. The password and yep. Yeah. I know it's amazing. Yeah, as, as, a, yes. as a consultant, I would be brought in as a third party because in an e-discovery or litigation matter, it was a bring your own device, but the corporate guys weren't allowed to look at their personal stuff. But at the same time, they needed to pull down the corporate data that was on there and they didn't have an MDM to do it. So they had to have someone who was kind of a third party. Okay. I would see all of it and go, Oh, yep. That's corporate. And I would do this. Okay. That's corporate. Yep. It's not. That's corporate. That's not. Right. And then you'd separate that into, you know, a logical evidence file for them and shoot it over to them. But that's um, it's really, it starts to get really interesting when you're talking about just, you know, mixing data, social media stuff, like the stuff that you post on social media, scraping that down using tools like, open source tools like Maltigo, right? Oh, Their yeah. social link stuff. Yeah, that's, yep. I mean, you start going into Maltigo, you'll go deep. Like one of we, one of our guys, James, he is a Maltigo master. Really? So that guy, yeah. And you, you have a question about Maltigo? James <laughs> Critzelis, that's who I talk to. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put his name out there. But yeah, he's he's like a master. He's a He was a PI, like, and that's another one. He's yep. a private investigator, right? He was never in law enforcement. He wasn't right. in, but he did the PI stuff. And like the law enforcement in his area, come to him sometimes for help it's hilarious he's like hold on hold on i think i have a one of the sheriffs is here to talk to me i'm like oh what did you do james he's like no no no, it's not nothing like that i'm like oh okay gotcha <laughs> yeah and that's kind of a uh you know a nice thing where we're talking about both here and then um someone had a question about the skill gap between mm. the law firms law enforcement and digital forensics and obviously not just law firms but there's obviously a whole corporate world i think i don't know if it's still true if you guys might know but last i heard again it's been a long time since i've actually been in working that walmart had one of the largest digital forensic labs um yeah, you know, no one would ever think that right yeah. um, like walmart. i can neither confirm nor deny that but yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah, they're well i mean yeah. they're, they have a they have videos out on youtube for center of excellence for some of their stuff jeff like yeah they, yeah walmart no they've been you know past presenters at, at yeah. fuse and oh yeah like, yeah yeah i see yep yeah, at our conference. So, they, you know, some of these teams, you'd be surprised, like Target has one of the best red teams now, right? Wow. Ever since that breach, their red team <laughs> yeah. is up there, right? They're one of the best um, in the business. And so when you talk about, you know, it takes, you know, sometimes it's when something happens, right? And all of a sudden now it's a reaction. Okay, now we got to yeah. do this thing. Yep. Um, I think, uh, you know, organizations like Wal you know, Walmart, like the largest retailer in the world, they're going to have to be on it. Um, but from a skills gap perspective, yeah, I mean, what is it? Just cybersecurity, there's 700,000 openings, right, that we can't fill. Yeah, I, I read recently, now, I don't know how true it is because I read it on the internet and I, I look at yeah, everything right. with a raised eyebrow that I <laughs> yeah. read. No matter where it comes is from, it I'm though? like, oh. yeah. that, Even if it's 7,000 and not 700, I mean, 7,000 bodies that are you know, still in this area, let alone yeah. 70,000 or 700,000, yeah. yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot of people, yeah. even if it's, you know, if it's just 7000 people is how I look at that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I heard this industry now, and I may be wrong. Maybe someone can Google really quick for us or you guys might know off the top of your head. It's like got a zero unemployment rate right now uh, just because there's such a demand well, for the skill set out there. Now, whether not that's true or not, not. I haven't finished the session yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes and no, right? Like it depends because sometimes, you know, some of these companies are, and maybe it's different now because you're remote and there's a lot of companies that are offering that are starting to open that up. Oh yeah, we're based in here, but you can be remote because mm -hmm. what they've found is, wow, we can get so much, a larger talent pool if we're able yeah. to open that up. Right. Yeah. Um, so obviously a lot of us are concentrated on the coasts right? and as you get inland, then you, you know, some of those, some of those boards um, are now having an opportunity to, to get some of that talent that 
typically gravitates mm-hmm. towards a beach <laughs> or yeah. a waterfront. You know, the barriers to entry, the ease, you know, the education side of it, it's just all these things that, you know, these huge hurdles that Jonathan and I faced, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, they're almost non-existent nowadays. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really amazing the opportunities that people have coming out of college. I mean, not even coming out of college, you could be rolling out of another, you know, law enforcement or some other yeah. uh, discipline and to be able to leverage those skills. Yeah. And it's, it's so, it's such a diverse tree, the digital investigations tree, you know, that if you can't find something you like in there, it's really not for you because like, you know, you guys were talking about it from OSINT stuff to really the, the IT cybersecurity lean side to the straight on, Hey, here's the raw, let's figure out what happened. Investigative side there. It's, it's a huge opportunity. Right. And, and with that being said, Ron had a question here is, uh, and, and obviously opinion wise here, should schools include subjects like Intel analysis for their forensic programs to kind of help with that investigative mindset. Now I know I, when I was training uh, digital investigators, it's, it was always easier to teach a curious mind, AKA an investigator, the nerd side of things than it was to teach a nerd right? The investigative side of things, because sometimes it just didn't click if they didn't have that natural curiosity, yeah. their brain lean that way. But what, what are you guys' yeah. thoughts on the, on how school programs should um, include it? Like, no, I agree with you. Cause like, I remember early on, like my first, like my first week on the job at guidance, I was sitting in the training center in Virginia and there were members of law enforcement that just got promoted into a, uh, you know, computer crime squad. And so they had that, you know, 15 years of background, law enforcement, investigative, hmm. th- being a detective. And all of a sudden they're like, this is a computer, this is a mess. And so like they're taking notes, and they're learning. Well, those guys kept going and they next, you know, they kept evolving and kept taking classes. And next thing they were doing end scripting, which is our custom, you know, uh, uh, programming language within mm-hmm. the case. And so again, you can teach them the technology, but it's that investigative mindset. I don't, that's a, I think that's the tougher one to uh, teach someone. Like they either kind of have that with that curious mindset or they don't. Yeah. I don't know. Jonathan? Yeah. And if they don't have that investigative mindset, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, maybe they're just not suited to digital investigations. They might right. be more suited to, uh, you know, blue team type stuff where it's just, you know, network defense or, mm-hmm. right. It's it, it the, digital forensics is actually a great jumping off point because of the level of understanding that you have to have of, the operating system, the bits yeah. and bytes of that drive. It's it's so like, there's such a core understanding of how computers work that now you can jump off onto the cyber side of it, right? And really go deep from, you know, from red team. I mean, that's what I did. I'm red teaming to, uh, you know, uh, purple team, blue team. This is all like cyber security related stuff mm-hmm. as opposed to digital forensics. But my at my core, I had that IT background yeah. and the digital forensics background and now um, I can, you know, springboard off into the, the, the world of cyber and do all this other, other crazy stuff that, that, that could be a whole nother thing <laughs> Yeah, from I mean, a red, red team perspective. Yeah. And, you know, with the uh, Intel analysis, absolutely. If we can teach them, if we can at least give them a framework of how to approach that, because in criminal justice uh, courses, you're taught that right in the, in the, um, as part of a criminal justice degree, you are, you are taught some of that. Hey, here's the case. Here's you know how you how you approach an investigation. Here's so you get some of that in there for digital forensics. I don't think we get that at all. A lot of our law enforcement folks are coming in with that experience already. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're not a law enforcement guy, you're not getting that investigative experience. You might just be, yep, I know how to ask questions. Oh, well, I know how to Google, <laughs> right? If you're not to Google really well and, and get answers. Sure, you'd, you'd be able to do that. Um, the other thing is having a, you know, the, the, the criminal mindset, adversary mindset, which is why red teaming is so much fun, having that adversary mindset and being able to, um, you know, being able to, what would that, if I were a criminal, where would I hide that thing? Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. If I, if I were trying to do something illegal, what would I do? I'm like, oh, I would do that. And so um, from a red team perspective, having that digital forensic kind of background now going into something where I'm doing adversary emulation. Um, on the cyber side, you're like, oh, I would do this, or I would, you know, how would a dia- how would a digital forensics guy catch me if I did this, right? Having that background, so there's some pretty interesting stuff out there 
um, around, you know, having the mindset and having, uh, but there is a way to teach it. I think it's just harder if you don't have a natural lean towards, you know, curiosity towards that kind of stuff. Right, right. And I have another question about any free workshops, uh, in person, virtual, does open yep. text organize anything like that? And man, it is a segue I almost forgot about. <laughs> I actually wrote it down on my pad here and I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, great question. Now it's, uh, I don't think it's free though, right? Um, but no, actually, um, so the virtual just, is, isn't it, Jeff? Yep. So oh. Nfuse is back um, in person. Nfuse, there you go. Uh, which is awesome is we're also offering a virtual option, which is free. Oh, look at that. So, again, I we're going to be doing uh, seven tracks, 50 sessions. Um, I don't know if they're going to be doing the hands-on lab sessions over virtual, if it's just going to be the physical, I don't have the details on that. I apologize, but we are offering a, a free virtual So I, for those that can't make it or that don't already have that, you know, in the uh, travel, uh, plans, by mm -hmm. all means, please sign up, please register and, uh, um, yeah. love to see whether it's physical or virtually there. If you're going to physically be there, you know, reach out like Jonathan, I know we'll be out there. The, uh, love to see you put, you know, face to a name. Oh, that's awesome. And you guys probably head over to your, your website. Uh, what's the website real quick? Yeah, Just it's uh, opentextworld.com. So we're okay. since we're under open text now, Nfuse is a conference within a conference. So mm -hmm. um, opentextworld.com is okay. um, where you try to register. get this posted I'll give you in the here. direct link. So if yeah. you want to share it. Oh, yeah, I will. If you want to post that in there. Yeah. yeah. So I'm posting Sorry, we're all stuff running here. around here. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, obviously we our parent company is Open Text. You know, the the we're the information management company, right? So like mm -hmm. enterprise information management, they've been around a long time as well. Um, you know, the first time when we got when we got acquired by Open Text, I was like, oh, aren't those the Live Link guys? <laughs> they used to have this product <laughs> called Open Text Live Link. Now it's Content Suite. They do all that all that uh, that stuff, but it's good stuff. Um, we're, we're just that, you know, we're the security business unit under open tech. So we do a lot of the enterprise security. Um, so in case we're, we're the, we're the in case guys. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for us, I'll be at black hat, uh, next week. If anyone's going to black hat, oh, nice. uh, stop by booth 2528. Uh, it'll say open tech security solutions. So, um, you may not be able to reach me on my regular phone. If you have my, my cell or because I will have a burner and you, you should you have, have a burner. A burner. Like, you <laughs> should have a burner. I will have a burner laptop and a burner like cell phone. So you will, you know, just hit me up on, uh, on cyber social hub and I'll check. There you that go. When I get back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so but Jess and the team over at Cisco, they're going to be managing the, uh, Knox. So Jonathan, you got no troubles whatsoever <laughs> using the Knox. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I trust nobody, Jeff. I yep. Let me know how that works. If you're out there, uh, yeah. not only stop by our booth and talk to Jonathan team, but also I'd say stop by the Network Operations Center. They, they'll oh, be yeah. doing that free course. It's really awesome to see what yeah. they're doing out there. So. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so you guys are both available, or uh, I know, Jeff, you will be very soon, right? There's a little peer pressure behind that on uh, Cyber Social Hub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get you to sign up. Come over there. Yep. But you guys, they can, you guys can find them on, on LinkedIn as well, too. Obviously, for obvious reasons, we're not going to post their information out on YouTube, yep. right? I mean, yeah. crime any Jonathan's taking a burner phone to the, the next oh, conference yeah. he goes to. The last thing he's going to do is put his yeah. information out here on yep. on uh, on it. So you can, um, you can find us on LinkedIn and you know yeah. connect with yeah. us. We're always sharing content and videos and stuff like that so you know reach out and uh we'd be happy to help you guys out that's awesome yeah. man hey thank you guys so much i, I want to be respectful of your time and i know i think i got most of the questions i'm scrolling through here real track real quick <laughs> trying to find all of these and, and i think i got them all um if you guys do have a question for them um obviously you can reach out to either of those sources so guys thank you so much and also um i'm going to be sending you guys one of these and i think i showed this to you like when we did our practice session maybe not um, but one of these little guys, uh, whether, yeah, you're cool. with, whether you're drinkers or not, that's okay. If not, you can make candles in here. Either way is fine. <laughs> but this is um, uh, uh, a shot glass, essentially, right? That has, uh, it says uh, Cyber Social Hub Hubcasts on it. Um, and it's got a picture of an A-10 Warthog, right? Uh, nice. Or the, the Thunderbolt. Yeah. And this little certificate right here, what this is, is an actual shell casing that was fired, really truly fired out of uh, the A-10 Warthog, which let me see if I can do this on the camera here. Oh, yeah, sweet. The, yeah, and this is the little certification that uh, that comes with it saying, yep, it was fired. It's a training round, so no depleted yeah, uranium. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no depleted uranium, <laughs> so no, you're, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you're, you're fine, I hope. I have not had anyone, you know, complain. <laughs> so uh, guys, again, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys 
uh, hanging out. Uh, don't go anywhere, but uh, everyone on YouTube, make sure you join Cyber Social Hub. And also, I always forget this, and my kids, they yell at me, Dad, you got to tell them to like and subscribe because you're on YouTube. So <laughs> you got to hit that. And also, the additional thing is hit the little bell, um, and you get notified whenever we go live or, or something new comes on the channel. Uh, so until then, guys, just hang out for one minute, and thank you guys so much. We try to do these every Friday at uh, 2 Eastern as well. So uh, come back and, uh, and join us. And uh, I know you, uh, Jonathan, you're going to be at uh, a conference I'm going to be at possibly, right? Uh, Techno, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I might cruise out to Techno West Coast, the so West Coast Techno. We're going to broadcast live from there. So I may have to steal you when you're out there too. So Jeff, awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wink, wink, hit, hit. You should probably come out to the West Coast somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and do that. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> thanks so much. And uh, I'll talk to you guys both soon. Thanks. Thanks for having us. See you. Uh -huh. Thanks, Kevin.